Hello and welcome Disruptors. Welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery Moments with Dr. Elisa White, your number one mindset disruptor. Because guess what? Your mindset is the key to your success in your life, in your career, in your business, and in everything you do and everything that you're going to level up in and achieve. Hey, this is all about an audio only moment to help you enhance your daily routines by providing new perspectives, encouraging your personal and professional growth, and pushing you beyond your comfort zone for optimum success. So let's dive right in today's episode. Have you wondered what was the one thing that separates you from a super successful person? Welcome to another inspiring episode of Mindset Mastery Moments. I am your host, Dr. Lisa White, your number one mindset disruptor. And today we are delving into a topic that's close to my heart. We're going to talk about the one habit successful people have that most don't. You see, successful individuals possess a merit of habits that set them apart from the masses. But there is one habit that truly stands out. They excel at dealing with discomfort. They can tackle tasks that others shy away from, even when they don't particularly enjoy them. You know, this is really a remarkable skill that makes them so successful. So if you're ready to join the ranks of high achievers, I got a process to share with you that will enhance your ability to confront discomfort. Let's break it down. What is true discomfort? You all know it. That one habit you're supposed to change so you can have a better diet or that one habit you're supposed to change to have a better exercise routine or the better habit of going to bed a little bit earlier at a time so that you can wake up feeling better and refreshed. Or sometimes it's just that habit of not having tough conversations with anyone so you don't ruffle too many feathers. That habit of suppressing your feelings and emotions that are not so comfortable to you, but you'd rather Do that, then have the conversation with a loved one or a friend. Yes, friend, you see, discomfort is something as as humans, we just don't like. And here's the thing, super successful or successful individuals, they don't like it either. But guess what? They do it anyway. Are you ready for us to dive right in? Let's, Let's just break it down here for a minute. What would be the first thing that we can do to confront discomfort? I would say start with something very meaningful, but simple at the same time. So choose an activity that's simple, but yet meaningful, like a daily walk or meditation or reading before bed or just not eating after seven. Something very simple. Find something that's not overly challenging, but can be, but it can have that, that positive change or impact in your life. You know, We've already talked about it in other episodes that we're not going to try to eat the entire elephant at one time, but we're definitely going to stand before the elephant and decide which part of the body we're going to tackle first. And so here's why I say start with something simple and meaningful. I remember when I wanted to develop new exercise habits, and we talk about this a lot because let me tell you something. I love to dance. I love to play tennis. I love to play badminton. I I love physical activity. I like to be outside when it's not too hot or too cold. (laughs) It's starting to get real peaky here. Did you hear all the things I just said about not wanting to be in a place of discomfort? But here's the thing. If I was going to change my body and upgrade my health status and really let my actual age be a little bit lower than my chronological age. I needed to take on the exercising. So when I first started creating healthy habits around exercise, or let's just say I traveled for a month and I just have not been, you know, exercising regularly in the daily flow and routine of exercising daily. What I do is reintroduce. Right now I'm in the space where I'm reintroducing over time. But when I first wanted to start off, I decided that 
it's really wonderful to go to the gym, but I'm not used to being in the gym picking up weights. I don't even know what to do there. And I didn't like all the crazy noises a lot of people made. I, let's just say I went to some of those gyms where people were quite show-offish and it didn't work for me. It wasn't motivating. It caused discomfort. So I started walking and no, I didn't even go outside. So there was no option for me to complain about the weather <laughs> because guess what? I started in my living room. I started in my living room. What excuse can I have? Because, hey, if it's too hot, I could turn up, turn down the air. If it's too cold, I could turn it up. So I had no excuse. I cleared a living room and I found this this. Uh, this uh, program that's called walk away to pounds, no plug, but it really helped me. And so she created these one, two, three, four, five mile uh, walking exercise that was more into a dancing, but the steps weren't complicated. So my two left feet didn't have anything to argue about. See, I found the way to step into my discomfort and still create some comfort around it. But here's the thing, over time, I began to challenge myself to go forward. So I started with a good one mile, which took me about 15 to 17 minutes. And then over time, I was doing two miles in 30 minutes. And then I was doing three miles in about 35 minutes and so on. And then eventually you found me outside taking it a little bit further here and there a couple times a week. And then boom, I'm on the treadmill and then boom, I'm on the, uh, the, the elliptical, which was very challenging for me earlier on in my life. But now that's the one big cardio thing that I love. I love to be on the elliptical. And then when I got on the elliptical, it was how many miles can I do in 30 minutes? And I went from going from one mile to two to three. And now I'm up to four miles in 30 minutes because I go really, really fast. But here's the thing. Did you see how that was? I had to step out of my comfort zone in time over time. So step one is start with something small, but very meaningful, something that would impact your life. Let's talk about step two in confronting discomfort. That one successful, that one thing that successful people have that many of us don't have. And that thing is to continue until you feel uncomfortable. You see, continue until you feel uncomfortable. So stick with the activity until you start feeling uncomfortable. So it might be something as mild as physical discomfort, something that really just annoys you and gets you angry, or it just even becomes boring and or any other negative feeling you want to have to it. So continue until you feel uncomfortable. That's when you know you're in the face of confronting discomfort. And number three, examine your discomfort. Now, check it out. Put it under a microscope and see what's really going on there. Once discomfort sets in, take a moment to observe. Just observe it. I, I want you to observe it without judgment. You know, we're very good at creating judgment and saying and creating negative comments to ourselves way more than anyone else does, right? That inner critic, where do you feel it in your body most when, you, when you're when you examining the discomfort? And I want you to rate it. I want you to rate the intensity on a scale of 1 to 10. Where do you feel it? Just notice the physical sensations. What happens as you pay attention to it for a while? What does that feel like for you? So what am I talking about? I was not comfortable being outside on and, and going outside and walking because I thought it was too hot. Man, I lived in Arizona at the time when I wanted to pick up on my um, creating this new habit around exercise daily. And so I, I didn't put myself outside. But I, as I said, I cleared out the living room and created space for myself. And I started to feel like I was going to pass out. <laughs> As I started to go faster. And so in my journey back then, I did not know what I'm sharing with you. But as I embark on different levels of lifting weights while I'm moving pretty fast and having weights on my body, jumping up and down and doing um, high intensity workout, my God, I feel like I want to di die still. I just started including that a couple of months ago. And it's quite a challenge for me. So I've done like 15 day challenge and then just didn't do it again. I'm not telling any lies. Listen, this podcast, we're absolutely honest and truthful with each other. 
But using this principle of examining my discomfort, I looked to see where the discomfort was and how I felt. But I listened to what I was telling myself. And a lot of times I was like, oh my God, this thing is going to kill me. And the minute I shifted to number four, relax and smile. Now, I wasn't always smiling here with this discomfort, but I did after. I relaxed and I let my body just feel the challenge. And then I got up. I mean, there are times I post and pause on the video. Like, oh God, I can't go anywhere. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'll push pause and I'll just take a deep breath and tell myself that I can finish this workout. So number four is relax and smile. Here's the secret sauce. Relax your body, put a smile on your face. Just, just can you try that right now as you're listening to this right now? Let's, let's pause. I don't know what you have going on in your day. Don't close your eyes, especially if you're driving, but just relax and, and smile, smile. I mean, listen to how my voice changes because I'm literally taking a deep breath and I am smiling and continue when the urge to quit appears. Friend, yes, relax and smile when you feel like quitting. Repeat this process after the third attempt. You can allow yourself the opportunity to stop. Relax and smile. This will help you. This this is just, this is one powerful tool because a lot of times I know, have you ever tried it? Like you went to say something else, you take a deep, something really rude to someone, you take a deep breath and you just... Mm, walk away, but relax and smile. Do it three times when you feel like you want to quit. It helps you break the habit of quitting as soon as discomfort comes into play. And it teaches you to, to continue to persist even when things get tough. So remember, like any skill, this one gets much better with practice. So we've got one, start with something meaningful and simple. Number two, continue until you feel uncomfortable. Number three, examine the level of discomfort. Where do you feel it? Number four, relax and smile. Do it three times every time you feel like quitting. And number five, keep building this skill. As you become more comfortable with this process, challenge yourself more. The more demanding activities, you increase the demand on how intense the activity is. For It could be for anything, even with your eating, even with your exercise, even with your habit of smoking, whatever it is, keep building on it. Increase the duration like I did with my workout. Increase the intensity of whatever you're doing. Soon you will find that you are capable of handling almost anything with a literal smile because successful people handle discomfort. And so even when you have to confront a loved one and you want to break the habit of suppressing how you feel and hiding it because you don't want to be in discomfort, even then you can relax and smile and then go have the conversation. Dealing with discomfort might sound simple in theory. I know, my friend, I'm giving you the theory, but I'm also coming from a very practical place. But it's not always easy to practice. However, I will guarantee you it's an incredible, valuable skill that is well worth the discomfort it takes to develop. Think about it. What other skill could we be more valuable than to have command of facing the hard stuff? Really, what else can be more valuable? Because life, as I would say, keeps lifing. <laughs> you know, life keeps keeps lifing. And it, it's it's a lot of demand. But if we just take it from a perspective that I can, I will, and I'm going to, and you follow these five steps of facing discomfort, I guarantee you, that you can see massive change in your life. You see, I don't want you to feel that you can't and that this is only theory. And I don't want you to think of all the discomfort and all the uncomfortable things in your life and try to do them at, at that time either. But I want you to pick one and develop and work these five steps. And then when you see the change and the effect start 
adding another one. Let's talk about some of the places where we can actually apply this. For example, diet. You might feel like eating vegetables and sticking to a diet is something that's dependent on your ability to deal with discomfort. Yeah, it is. It it certainly is. Like some people don't like vegetables. I have friends who don't like water. <laughs> and let me tell you, drinking more water or uh, just just really enhances the quality of your diet, your skin, and all these different benefits. So sometimes it's not even about what you eat. It just even starts with what you drink or don't drink. Both are physical and psychological activities to change your diet, sticking to a diet, right? How about exercise? I spoke about my journey. It's hard to get your running shoes on. A lot of times just to put the shoes on and go out the door is hard. Overcoming this momentary discomfort is a big part of developing new exercise habits. So just a mo just just start with getting the shoes on and getting yourself out the door. If you're like me, it's getting my shoes on and turning the television on to the channel that helps me work out. We talked about procrastination in a few episodes ago. Procrastination is all about discomfort. <laughs> Oh my goodness, procrastination is all about avoiding discomfort. The whole reason we procrastinate is because the thing that we're procrastinating on is challenging to do and it makes us uncomfortable. Spreadsheets. You don't want to do a spreadsheet. You don't want to do your budget because it's uncomfortable confronting your habits of spending on things that you don't really need. So procrastination. Interestingly, we procrastinate until the pain of not doing it becomes greater than the pain of actually doing it. Don't be the person. We will just, when it starts to hurt, when someone is yelling or screaming and things are just falling apart, that's when we stop the procrastination, actually get stuff done. So let's talk about learning. It's not always easy to sit down and practice uh, doing something that you've never done before. For example, let's say you wanted to learn the piano or learn calculus, or work on your Russian language skill or Spanish, whatever that might look like for you, but you know that you have to do it. And even though it's this, it, it creates discomfort and you, it's uncomfortable, you're going to take it on. How about the chores? You know you got to clean out that garage. Come on now. You know you need to organize. Last week, we, last episode, we talked about organization. And you know you got to put your house in order because you can't even think clearly. Your creative streak doesn't come when you are in the spot of, of your home being in disorganized chaos. Chores are a great way to practice your discomfort management skills. How about we just start there? Forget diet, forget exercise. We're not going to mess with you like that yet. But how about we start with those chores that you've been procrastinating on? They need to be done and they're usually not too painful. So start there. You see the applications for applying my five steps to becoming a person who embraces discomfort and or let's just face it confronts discomfort is there's so many endless applications that we can use all your current issues could be resolved more easily if you could just overcome the discomfort of implementing solutions i want you to think of yourself as a solution reservoir that just stands up and say hmm that one's going to be hard. That one's going to be hard. That's going to be hard. Okay, I'm going to start here and I'm going to get it done. I'm going to do what the hard stuff. I'm going to do the hard stuff. So I encourage you to build your ability, overcome discomfort, and reach greater heights of success in your life. It's the most valuable skill you can ever have. I want to remind you that if you think you can't, you're right. And if you think you can't, you're also right. Every single thing starts with your thoughts. Really, my friend, how is your mindset? I want to remind you to continue to tune in to Mindset Mastery Moment every Monday with yours truly, Dr. Lisa White, where we discover the insights and practical strategies can have profound impact on our lives, our career, and our business. Each episode is designed to be brief, yet impactful moment of your Monday, providing you with actionable insights, inspiring stories that you can immediately apply in your life. I want to ask you to share the link, comment, subscribe wherever you're tuned in, 
And let's continue to disrupt the status quo and rewrite the narrative of what's possible. As always, live passionately on purpose. Love, light, peace, and blessings. Dr. Alisa, signing out. Bye now. Thank you.